welcome to another episode of Wedflix. I'm your host, Julia Brame. I'm the founder and editor of Brides Up North, the top UK wedding blog for Northern couples. And I have the pleasure of editing Unveiled Magazine, your go-to bridal glossy. Today on the show, I am speaking with a lady who needs no introduction in the Yorkshire wedding scene. It's Ellen of LND Events, and she is a fantastic wedding planner. I know her well. She also helps out at our Brides Up North events, and she is the lady you want around on your event day. Trust me. Let's chat to her about all things coordination and wedding planning. Hi, Ellen, and welcome to the show. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm really good, thank you. Um, everybody, this is Ellen Davies. She is a wedding planner based in Yorkshire, and she is probably the most organised lady I know. Um, <laughs> so much so that she's going to be helping us with our with our events. So we're really excited to have her as part of the Brides at North events team. And uh, yeah, you'll see her you'll see her face at any of our wedding shows that you attend. She's going to be, have everybody planning away. <laughs> on overdrive I was like, so I... Helen let's talk about you though so do you want to introduce yourself and your business yeah so I'm Ellen I own LND events um I've been running my uh planning business for ooh, seven years now yeah well I started in events in 2012 but I moved into weddings in 2014 and went full-time in 2016 um so I offer a range of different packages for people um I also do other events as well so that's why it's fantastic that I can come and uh, work alongside you for example so it's still within the wedding industry but it's a different slant for me mm -hmm. um and yeah different packages for different people whether it suits different tastes or budgets really um to be there as much or as little as they need me to that's it in a nutshell <laughs> yeah absolutely and so how did you kind of get into weddings in the first place like why did you fall in love with that side of it um totally accidentally if I'm honest um so I was working we, we were just having a little chat about this but I used to work for a government um department and um I took a promotion for not gonna lie financial reasons um mm -hmm. but it was a bit of a mistake uh and I kind of quickly realized it was the wrong move for my development and up until that point I'd absolutely loved working there but it was beginning to really take an impact on my mental health um and so I just started looking for uh, things that I thought I might be good at had no idea but organization was always a strong point because I'd been a manager for so long within that organization um and I actually started trying to do a bit of marketing for for companies mm. on a voluntary basis. And then that fell into marketing for specific events that were happening within my hometown of York. Um, and I kind of quickly realised that I could do basic marketing, but that's not my forte, but mm. the organisation is. And um, so, I, so I absolutely loved it. And I knew then that that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to leave. So my long time, long term goal was always to just sort of get to that place. Um, and a few years into events, uh, I started meeting wedding connections that were coming to some of the fairs or events I was working at. Uh, and they kept saying, oh, you've got to move into the wedding industry. It's so much fun. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> lovely. And uh, if I'm honest, I had like bridezilla in my head which actually has Ooh. never ever happened to me <laughs> I don't think it exists I think it's a really cruel term for people that don't organize don't understand the stress of organizing and organizing comes naturally to me that is like one of my only talents <laughs> I'm not a talented person um, oh, I like it's, <laughs> it's not for some people and so like it's just a, about understanding their pressures and so yeah and I've never had a bride a bridezilla so um, yeah I'm glad I agree really... with you I think I think they do exist but, yeah. if you are a bridezilla listening and watching this <laughs> then I'm glad you are because you need to have a word with yourself but I think <laughs> in all my years we've been running wedding shows now since Oh, I don't know, 2011, 2012, 2011, I think the first shows were. And so that is a lot of brides and grooms through the doors. And actually they can be groomsillas too, so we shouldn't just categorise yeah. brides. That, that um, <laughs> but I think I might have had one <laughs> in all that time through the I door have, and it was I noticeable. Have, yeah, yeah. I've had people I haven't seen eye to eye with all the time. Don't, like, don't get me wrong, but if I'm honest, 
Uh, do you know the people that I have the most trouble with, and I still manage to work it out, is the parents. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, and normally, like, even the people that have been the most wound up or can't relax about it, and that's why they've booked me, when it comes to their wedding day, of course, they're off enjoying it. They're having a fantastic time. But then you get to, like, meet the parents. And, <laughs> and they're usually the very particular ones. <laughs> if someone's, though, probably it necessitates itself. Because if someone's kind of booking you, then they're probably not going to hit that level where they are, you know, become the sort of stereotypical crazy bride or groom. Like, they... they they know that everything's being taken care of so they almost don't need to get to that stage I think that yeah, probably is yeah. why you know yeah I think the only times it's come like verging on it is when I've had a particular booking from someone that is a bit of an organizational freak themselves yeah <laughs> whatever better word um, you can say um, that because you are one and so am I so I'm like <laughs> yeah 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 I know yeah me too yeah yeah I mean it's I mean it's hard for them to let go of that control and that's the only time but it's not it, they're, they're still lovely people it's just that they want to do it but they haven't got the time because they're so busy in their own life and jobs as well so it verges on it because they they don't have the understanding of how time timelines work or how you know what dates people work to mm. and things so they might chase me up more than necessary yeah um, and it's just about like just making them understand and just like calming their nerves but it's not it's not that I don't know where they're coming from so that's why I don't believe that yeah know, I, there's I know no malice coming from it there's no I've, n- I've not had a diva let's put it that way I've not had a diva <laughs> <laughs> so listen we, we massively digress there but you were saying that you were sort of stopping going into weddings because of that sort of stereotype that doesn't really exist yeah so what um, happened that like, what made you take the yeah point? So I just, um, so actually, I've always had a lifelong dream of owning my own venue. I don't think, unless I win the lottery that I don't mm-hmm. play, <laughs> it'll ever happen. Um, so I actually started trying to make links with um, barns. That I lo- and that's where my heart is at, barn, barn wedding venues. But I was actually, like, contacting farmers and saying, would you rent me your barn so I could run my own business? And they're like, no, that sounds like a stupid idea. <laughs> Who's gonna have a barn wedding? <laughs> this was a long time ago. And then I met one um individual who really t- kindly took a chance on me, and he was not that keen on the customer facing side of it, but he did want to get really hands-on, so it seemed like a perfect partnership. Mm-hmm. Um, and he let me kind of cut my teeth in the industry and get going with him. And um, it was really, really worthwhile experience for me. Um, but it, I think is often the way when even when owners think they don't want involvement they slowly do begin to love it and actually he really did love it and he's so helpful like everybody I know that goes to this particular venue is like do you want to give a shout out to your oh, venue yeah owner? so he, I know who it is yeah know it is. <laughs> he's called Paul and he owns Barnby Field Barns um yeah. and like oh, that place will always have my heart because I got married there myself a few years later um but yeah he's super helpful and everyone's like oh he did this for me he did that for me and blah 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 because um, I've met Paul and he does <laughs> love it he absolutely yeah. loves it doesn't he yeah he does he Better. really does um so it didn't like it wasn't as fruitful in business for me as it was as an entity for the barn so it kind of meant that I needed to go freelance and just try getting a variety of experience but it's so nice I love working there I've got a wedding there this year and I can't wait um it's also so- nice in a way that I know what you mean do you know what I think you'd be a brilliant venue owner Oh, thank you. <laughs> I really do. I can like see it in you. I'd love to work with you on your at your own venue because it kind of have in a funny sort of way. It's some some other venues that you kind of started to manage and things actually. Maybe that's why it's in my head. But it's kind of interesting though to like move around as a planner, yeah. right? A yeah, it is. It is, and I do go in like swings and roundabouts about whether I actually ever would want that if I did get the opportunity now because I do mm-hmm. love variety. Um. And I think the one kind of not not a negative because it's up to it's completely up to the individual. But when I do a lot of coordination at a barn, you tend to get the same looks again and again. And mm. I don't have a say in that. So then 
that's when it, it gets a little bit deflating for me because I'll end the year thinking I haven't got that much to show for it because I've been at the same place and it's the same kind of looks and I and so you know um so you know I do love going freelance now um and the only way I would want to have a venue is if it was totally blank canvas where they could just do it and I would really encourage like go as crazy as you want it's because you like the styling side too you yeah. see you're a little bit more than your traditional wedding planner because let's talk about your skill set because it's not just organized because you said yeah I'm organized well yeah tip you expect you to be because you're a wedding planner but I think it kind of goes above that you you're you're pretty you kind of like planner and stylist I do love styling. I, d- I really do love it. I don't have a, the confidence that I think an out and out stylist that sells themselves as a stylist does have. And I also don't have the desire to hold my own stock. So I think mm. that's where I differ. And I do try and make that clear to people. Yeah, I don't mean a stylist as an event stylist like that. I mean, like a almost like a stylist like I do for the magazine I mean you're yeah. like the conceptual oh. art direction basically okay, yeah then I absolutely love that definitely yeah 100 yeah. percent. I would love to do more fashion editorial kind of style of stuff like I love that <laughs> I love it oh yes please <laughs> it's interesting for our next issue of the magazine so I'm putting the plans together now for it big re I don't want to say relaunch it's not relaunch because I was happy with what we were with it before um it's a restart I guess of yeah. unveil bringing back the print um and yeah I want to kind of bring a few more independents on board like yourself to do a bit more styling so it's not just kind of all from my mind I want to um expand it a little bit artistically I think so yeah we could definitely chat about that but um, yeah. your shoots are great the stuff oh, you put together I do, yeah I love that I do I, uh, if I could afford the time and because there is money in, well, everyone knows it's money in shoots, but even as a, when you're bringing a service rather than a product, it's still money because it's your time and effort. And also I do go and buy like lots of random little bits. Like my husband is getting quite annoyed at how many like odd two plates or two bowls <laughs> yeah. that he's not got at home. <laughs> um, so yeah, just like for odd table designs and things. But um, yeah, I love it. I, I just yeah and I don't we've talked about this before but I don't follow trends so mm. I just come up with a crazy idea or a, a song that I haven't heard for years and that'll get me thinking or um, I think your end results are quite trendy though oh thank you I don't yeah it's not the aim but I'm glad it I'm glad it looks like yeah fresh yeah yeah and I and they're not designed to be exactly how you would do your wedding so they can Mm -hmm. be a little bit out there but I don't want them to be so out there that people are like oh my god what would I do with that it's not that but the whole idea of a shoe is for creatives to get together to push the boundaries and then someone can look at it and say like oh well I like that table piece or I like that bit of stationery um it's like watching a catwalk show isn't it you would agree it's it's like an inspiration piece yeah you wouldn't necessarily go with the hot picture but you would buy the top shop version (laughs) yeah or you might if you could you might if you could (laughs) but um yeah I mean when I kind of design my shoots it is it can be it's I do not start with bridal in mind I, I don't know if you do the same I start with like you say like something kind of completely odd like I would have seen a colour or something in a magazine another type of magazine like an interiors magazine or uh, I don't know like just walking around or a stained glass window or something like that yeah um and then it, you've got this kind of hook of an idea and then from there you sort of tell a creative narrative and, and start the story rolling and try and get that across to the suppliers who are who are unfortunate enough to be working with you and your crazy <laughs> one photograph inspiration board because I don't like to I don't like to do Pinterest because I feel like if it's if it's already on Pinterest, I'm not really very interested in it, if you know what I mean. I definitely know what you mean. Yeah, I mm. found that. It's, it's, a, it's a strange one, isn't it? When I was doing that aerial shoot, um, there was nothing on Pinterest. So I was like, I couldn't get across what I wanted to tell the other suppliers because I couldn't mm-hmm. find the image. But then actually I was really excited by that because I was like, oh, no one's done it. <laughs> yeah, it's good. So, I have this concept that we shot at Birdsall House, which was kind of like to create a catwalk. It's my favourite, oh, is it? I don't know. One of my favourite shoots that we've done because I did love our Italian shoot and 
there's been a couple of different yeah, you've done and um we we shot a birds of house we yeah that was a high high end like big budget one and we created a catwalk within Birdsell house it kind of hosted a catwalk show but without actually having anyone there and Amazing. we had like the models and all loads of different dresses and but that all came from one image that was just kind of like I think a model in a stately home walking as on a catwalk with like loads of ribbons around their neck. Oh, amazing. In different colours. And um, could I, if the life of me, find this image? But I ended up having to kind of like draw it for people <laughs> and go, yeah, yeah, just just go with it. Just go with it. And it was fab. It came out really well. And yeah, it was it, it worked. And the team just got it. So but it's also gorgeous as well. So, mm, yeah. It's one of my faves. It's just beautiful. And the team there are fantastic as well. So yeah, if you are a Yorkshire based bridal groom, check out Birds or House and Cara's team because they're um, they're awesome. They're in the next village to me, so I get to drive. Oh, them. nice. Yeah, they're so nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, and their, their venue is just so unique. It's um it's incredible, really, isn't it? Yeah. So okay, so those skills, so you're organizing and you're kind of eye for detail and styling. Um that's fab but how do you you said before you kind of touched before about kind of wanting to make weddings unique to the couple but how do you achieve that with each couple that you work with um just getting to know them so before they like if they initially inquire with me but they're a little bit on the fence then I always offer a non-obligation meeting anyway and um, at those meetings, I did used to sort of get too carried away and give them a bit too much information. So <laughs> <laughs> now it's my chance to shut up and listen to them. And um, so it's all about them giving me their ideas. And then if they do want to book, we have another meeting. Um, and that, that goes with even if it's just me coordinating it. So we'll go back and we'll readdress things. And I think sometimes people get scared of the word theme. And I don't mean like make it really cheesy, but it is a theme. I want to talk about themes with them. So whether that's just their favorite color, favorite flower, where they met, anything like that, that's what I bring out to make it personal for them. So yeah, I'd agree with you on that. I think a theme is important because like, I, I know exactly what you mean, because when I ask the question for my blogs or my magazine or what was the theme, everyone's always like, Oh, we didn't really have a theme to the day, but blah, 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 blah. And you're like, that was your theme right, right. there. You know, like exactly. the, you know, the tartan or the burgundy colour scheme because of your Scottish heritage or your beachy celestial vibes. That was your theme, you yeah, know? That's exactly it. And you don't have to make it some crazy, like, walking into an event prop place you can that's brilliant I love that if you want to but you don't have to do um I so, do you know what it's interesting that because I feel like you might get more of that going forward because people have been sort of cooped up with their own imaginations yeah. and they want to have an amazing knock your socks off party that I think we will get like installations and oh, wonderlands yeah. and oh, I'm isn't sorry. that excited I'm doing a Christmas one at the moment and she is just the bride is just going to town and it's amazing it's just I just love it when I get a client like that because and this is no disrespect to people that can't do it but mm. when they're just like yeah just go with it then I can go what about this what about that and I'm waiting for them to say no and they go yeah let's do it <laughs> so it's brilliant um so I think I as well there, there was like a, a period where everyone was a little bit scared to kind of like push the boundaries with it and everyone wanted kind of like you the all white wedding or your neutrals wedding you know but generally what happens is lots of couples are getting married at the same time as their friends because everyone kind of hits an age and it's just the way it is in, in general I'm generalizing here and um, but you don't want your wedding just to be like one of the cookie cutter identical weddings in a year wouldn't it be just so cool if everyone if you really do sort of do something wow and then you're and I don't mean in terms of spend either I mean in yeah. terms of kind of like just something different. Yeah, exactly. But then, then your friends are like, wow, remember you know, Julia and Alan's wedding was... And, and think, what what event would you like to go to? Like, what would you be blown away by at an event? I think that yeah. those are the, like, the important questions. Like, the weirder, the better for me. Definitely. Not Halloween-y weird, actually. <laughs> I've done a Halloween one. I have done a Halloween one. <laughs> not spooky weird. <laughs> not, not like, am I going to be frightened here weird? I don't want any, like, fright nights stuff going on. But apart from that, 
the way to the better. Yeah, I agree. And that's the one thing that will always make it personal when you can't get away from the inevitable same kind of thing. Because if you're going to get married in summer at a barn and you're going to mm. have, it, there is going to be elements that are going to look the same. But then if you bring in something that is totally unique to you, no, that it, no one else has done that. Like you might, you might have meet someone else that wants a travel theme about where you both went as a couple, but you didn't go to exactly the same countries exactly. as a couple as the other couple or whatever. Yeah. So that's where you stand out. And I would say to people, like, like you said, like don't get too into Pinterest. Just mm-hmm. think about yourselves and yeah, make it unique. Yeah, like just throw out some weird ideas. So like me and you, oh, we're going to have an absolute feel today on our events when we're just sat there chatting for hours. I'm going to try and put you... Problem is, Ellen's too good, so she has to go to like the ones that I'm not at. So we're not really going to see each other that much. But um, yeah, like just thinking, you know, when you said like Summer Barn just there, and I was thinking, what could you do to make that really different and stand out? Like you could do some crazy... You could have Bouncy Castle... Like I love a bouncy castle. Yeah, I've got a carousel coming to Manchester. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, the December one sounds good. I know. You might want to gate crash it. Yeah. <laughs> it is. I'm doing, a, I'm doing a Narnia ceremony. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, you see, amazing. Like, you just, but like, this is the sort of stuff. You want fake snow. You yeah. want little deers everywhere. <laughs> um, all this stuff. Yeah, definitely. Oh. Yeah. This is the uh, fun event planning though, isn't it? This is the fun bit, like the idea stage. And working with people, because it is an isolating job, you're sitting at home unless you're doing an event. It is the, this is what you need, the creative bouncing. Like it's the one thing, it's the only thing I miss about my mm-hmm. previous job is being in an office with people that you can bounce ideas off. Um, and I know there are places where you can go and like rent a desk and that kind of but not near me there isn't um yeah so yeah you need this and that's why like networking events like the ones you host and stuff they're perfect because you just start with a silly idea and you think no no one's gonna get this and then actually go someone will go like oh no what about this and you go up and up and up a level you know you've given me an idea for inside our unveiled network so for anyone kind of watching this who doesn't know what our unveiled network is it's a wedding supplier network where we've kind of come together to share ideas support each other and just kind of see where it goes because we started it in lockdown and I've got big plans for we're going to go after this absolutely yeah yeah and then I don't know about you but we were saying we didn't follow trends but as a magazine editor I kind of I'm supposed to know about trends in bridal I've been confused by trends in this lockdown year I think they've all disappeared what do you think yeah, um, and the latest one that I'm beginning to see um, is the only solid one that I've got going at the moment is the kind of flower meadow look, um, mm. you know, like the gingham. Gingham's very on trend at the moment. Oh, yeah, um, okay. But that's very, that's from a fashion point of view and I'm waiting to see it come down into bridal. I actually just purchased a gingham tablecloth the other day for a shoot that nice. I'm doing. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, that's probably the only trend, but I agree with you. I think that it's been so hard. No one's been physically allowed to go out and do research or go to places. So like magazines are rehashing. Mm-hmm. Um, Which is why we didn't print because it's yeah. not our bag. Like yeah. just and also the distribution thing <laughs> obviously <laughs> no events to hand them out uh, yeah. no one going through Double H Smith's but um yeah it's like it was just all last year and people would be like oh what trends do you I've said this a few times people would say oh, what trends do you think will be coming or, or I'd ask someone like I've done you and then I'd be like yeah I think it's going to be all about the individual <laughs> <laughs> which is such a, a dodge um because I was thinking yeah, I don't know I don't know what the trends are going to be I think this I, I think that's a lovely one I hadn't thought of that one I think that's lovely I'll leave it to you to come up with that one um but um yeah, I think there's going to be like floral meadow um yeah mm. uh, it, I've just I've seen it recently in some high street sh- high street shops that that vibe on like the, the kind of picnic vibe. vibe yes exactly the mm-hmm. picnic vibe yeah yeah like so, sort of French yeah, but, um, I, I sort of see a little bit of a theme for kind of like undone kind of woodland coming yeah, through. That's interesting. Um, we've obviously had kind of like a, a lean into romance. So like, you know, your Romeo and Juliet sort of thing with the, all the dresses with the sleeves. And... Yeah, that is true. Yeah. 
that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, I think kind of like romantic, undone. It's gonna be an, it's gonna be exciting because I need to start and plan some stuff. Some I shoots don't and know, stuff. I don't know how you do that. Like to be tr- to have to be trend led, it's really hard, isn't it? I mean, I know yeah. it all comes down from fashion, but to be honest, like like I said, we, we try and like push ahead a couple of seasons, so we're never really that concerned about what's going on at the minute. So we almost kind of like. I hate to say it, kind of make it up as we go along. <laughs> no, no, I was going to say, you're the leading the way. I'm not making it up. <laughs> we'll all do what you do. But it's the same. We all have the same influences. And there's there's little things. And I think interiors, like travel, like it all kind of just seems to sort of go together. And then you'll start to see it come through with like the props. And, yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's very, it's very earthy still. but And I like that. I, do, I love the look of it, but I can't practice it. I'm like, I do admire the certain people's feeds with the kind of the boho-y pampas and, mm-hmm. the and wear jugs and stuff. But I, I'm really rubbish at doing it. I've got a bit too much colour in my house. and Although it doesn't look like it because I'm sat in the <laughs> dining room. But I, yeah, it, it's not me personally as much as I love looking at it. I can't do it. So Yeah, yeah. you kind of, like, I, I do have that vibe a bit. Um but I think it's it's nice to have different influences. This is what I mean about kind of having some guest stylists on the magazine and and just kind of um, letting other people kind of artistically sort of guide you a little bit more. I think it's I think it's great to collab. But I, I, I've really enjoyed the collaboration of this year with the network, and I think that that's kind of what I want to keep keep going. Definitely, to be honest. Yeah. So let's look, let's let's go. Let's stop our kind of geeky ramblings about styling about yeah, you know we're probably not couples. still the brides and grooms they're like what <laughs> no they'll be just knowing that you are going to be full of ideas to be yeah. honest that's the thing and so passionate about it as well and that's what comes across so I'm sure you've got some brides and grooms watching who are thinking yes like let's get let's get in that second planning meeting and uh, and, and rip up the rule book mm-hmm. but let's talk about um Let's talk about kind of those different services you offer. So like full planning, like what does that look like? How do people kind of approach you and and how does it work? Yeah, so because I've been, I going to say I've been around the block a few years, um, <laughs> I have got quite a lot of connections with venues. So I, if I'm honest, people tend to find me after they found the venue because very kindly, a lot of venues recommend me. That said, I can do venue searching as well so you could come to me first and that's really exciting for me because I love being able to go around and show what I think will suit that couple mm-hmm. um and it and I'll vary it a lot because what they think they might want might not actually be what they end up going with yeah um so yeah so you can come and find me from the beginning but if not I would encourage as soon as you booked the venue because otherwise it becomes more of a bespoke package which I can move on to um but yeah full planning is is everything so I'll start with the most important suppliers in terms of ones I know that get booked up the most quickly um ones that are yeah well it's mainly going off their availability and we wouldn't I'd hate them to miss out on who they want Mm. um and importance and then when the key suppliers are in place it's then moving on to the design element of it so I will work with the couple to go into all this styling ideas and design a concept for them um, and then find any additional suppliers that add on to that that weren't in the key bunch in the first place um, so for example I'd class a florist is a very important necessity unless you mm. paint flowers um, but equally they are part of a styling design <laughs> Yeah, I've had some yes. people. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, but if I was just to take on a design element, that's certainly you know the florist would be under that wing for me as well. Mm-hmm. So um, then it's about props and anything they want to hire or anything they want to buy themselves, um, and then it's seeing it through. So I'll be there. I'll be talking timelines. I'll be setting it up for them because I've done the styling I know exactly what it's going to look like in my head and how to do it for them so I I hope that's a relief for them you know I never say they can't come along and help but I want to leave oh no you don't want to be doing that kind of day before your wedding you don't want to be setting it up I did and it was a nightmare and Mm. so if I can give advice to people it's like you know just make sure you've got sensible people that you can brief in advance because I've always always, yeah and always as like as a novice 
it always takes longer than you think it's going oh, to. It does. So you don't want to be there like till 1 a.m. the night before your wedding. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. I don't know. Like I can think of a friend, hi Charlotte, who um who, you know, we were hanging, what are they called? Like those honeycomb balls. Oh my god. So I was just about to say that. I was gonna say not even a novice, a professional who learns from her mistakes. I was I was setting up a venue at Barnby Field who mm-hmm. gave me a two day hire, thank goodness. Um, and I this this couple wanted a honeycomb installation yeah. doing all around the staircases. It took me six hours and I was yeah. panicking like that because I was like, that's almost my full first day gone. Just doing my friend Charlotte's yeah. wedding looked incredible, right? It looked incredible. I was a wedding, I was in weddings by then, and um, she got married at Priory Cottages, Priory Barn and Cottages and Webby. Beautiful it was gorgeous and she had like um teal and sea green like honeycomb balls in their marquee all hanging hanging I say Charlotte because I don't think Smithy her husband was involved in any way shape or form <laughs> so she had all these honeycomb balls hanging from the ceiling and then on the back of each chair each Chibari chair she hung like ribbons oh, yeah. down the back of each chair in the different colors yeah but we had to do all that and I think we had like two hours to do it all and we were like Charlotte, yeah. this is we're gonna die yeah you know, like, we don't it's awful to... it's awful <laughs> we got it done to be honest we got it done it was fine she was right we it was and it all came together beautifully and her flowers were all different colors and the boys were bow ties and you know it was really cool it was yeah. good um, I, like, I like the bonding element over it but you do have to be very careful about who you pick to help you um, yeah obviously she picked pro and me <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was extremely regimented in my own setup as you can imagine and uh, my friends were whipped into shape <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they probably hated every minute of it but <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah it, it, it is really hard so I take the lead in that and then they can dip in and dip out but I'm not relying on them to be the extra body for me so I will make sure that I um quote and prepare according to what they need um, and then I'm there to coordinate the day. And if it's if it's a fully plan and it's in a venue that isn't self managed and has its own rules, then I'll come back the next day and tidy away as well, so they don't oh, have to do anything. <laughs> um, and you do just do that coordination bit too, right? Yes, I do. So that's definitely my most popular package. I think people are still in love with the idea of styling. Uh, sorry, of designing their own wedding and uh, and planning it all. But I like when I do come to wedding fairs if I have a stand my sort of like opening line is always like you should never work your own day Um, oh my goodness no so yeah I I always I always advocate get a coordinator at least Um, I'd say it's impossible to work your own day it's it's not fun um I did it I I, I didn't mean to do it myself but I did do it for my own wedding I just couldn't switch off because that's who I am and um you can see you can actually visibly see it in photos I'm not relaxed yeah (laughs) <laughs> yeah I mean I haven't got my tick list in front of me on the image I love it when I see um couples that like that, that physically going oh my god what time is it and they just didn't know oh, yeah. the whole day got carried away with them or they are like oh wow is it time to do that yet whereas I knew exactly what time it was all day um so I just want I want them to be that relaxed and enjoying it. Uh, I mean, after all, they've spent a lot of time and money in doing getting it to that. Do you point. know what though, Helen? It's interesting for you because you may not have enjoyed it as much if you'd been relaxed. Like you may have been like it would have taken away the fun for you. Yeah, I don't think I could. I, I don't think I could have relaxed. It just wouldn't happen. It's not me. I mean, I want, don't get me wrong. I don't look miserable or angry on <laughs> any of my pictures. I it do look strange. really every day. <laughs> It is weird. I'm of the same nature. Like I didn't do that on my wedding day because my parents are also of the same nature, so they can do that for me. But um, I'm the same. Like if I go to someone else's house, say for Sunday lunch, I don't really enjoy it that much because I like want to be doing. But I can't like just yeah. sit about. Do yeah. you know what I mean? It's kind of like I need to be like actively yeah. working on it. I know it's it's really okay. funny when you work in events. You can never not work in events. That's the yeah. thing. You can never like go each birthday party that pops up is like a chance to and you're like no don't do it don't do it. oh okay <laughs> <laughs> and you always let like you're always learning I mean nobody should like I don't believe that anybody stops learning in whatever job they do in life 
if you have, you need to move jobs. Um, so there's not there's not a wedding that I don't learn something from. And it might not be that I need to amend things in the future because it yeah. might be very specific to that wedding that just didn't go quite right. But or you've, or you've just got that knowledge like deep inside if you need it for another time. That's the thing, I think. You can think, oh, okay, I clocked that. Like next time I would do it differently, but there may yeah. never be a next time. So yeah. yeah that so you learn all the time and you can and then you can give that advice to your couples and yeah <laughs> so so I tell you what I think now would be an opportune time to drop your web address so what's your web address Ellen so it's lnd that's the letters l n d and then it's hyphen events.co.uk and what about Instagram Instagram I'm lnd events I'm there on Pinterest and Twitter and the only one that's slightly different because somebody had stolen it it's Facebook so I'm um, L&D event planning on that yeah it's been such a pleasure chatting to you too, and um you. well I'll be chatting to you a lot more inside the network I know so um and at our wedding show so um oh, okay. yeah, so I'll speak to you soon thank you for being our guest thank you for having me